Nice and big for me. Okay, it's going to be lots and lots of pressure, there, okay? Yes, it's the nation's biggest fear. Not nice, not nice. When was the last time you saw a dentist? Going to the dentist. And with over 90% of adults suffering from decayed or missing teeth, we're on the front line in the battle to save Britain's smile. No matter how bad you think your teeth are, I bet you I've seen worse, and probably this week, possibly today. So don't worry. Are you crying because you're happy or sad? In the most intimate of relationships, you are all like your nails. Our dentists know all our secrets. I'm really sorry. And there's nothing we can hide from them. It's definitely a window on the lifestyle, because you can tell if somebody smokes, if they drink too much alcohol, so you can't really get away with anything. <laughs> if you can summon up the courage to get through the dentist's door, the results could be life-changing. I could never, ever repay him for what he's done, really. They're beautiful, really beautiful. So come with us behind the scenes of the University Dental Hospital of Manchester and meet the men and women whose job it is to make us smile. <laughs> Brace yourself, because the dentist will see you now. <laughs> Manchester's Dental Hospital. Ticket number four, please. Every year, some 90,000 people come through its waiting rooms. Every mouth has a tale to tell. A typical week here reveals the inside story of the often shocking state of Britain's teeth. In the operating theatre, recently qualified Kirsty is starting the first of her many multiple extractions. Lower left D is coming out. Because children under five in the northwest have the worst teeth in England, the hospital is in a never-ending battle to deal with the fallout from our addiction to sweets and chocolate. Kirsty has lost count of the thousands of baby teeth she's had to pull. And the kids just keep on coming. Oh, it's very pretty. It's okay. Got a bit of a snotty nose, Molly, so you don't want me to dribble all over you. Dentistry is like detective work, and Kirsty finds plenty of clues as to the culprits. He is eroded. He is eroded. This still carries on the sea. Does she eat a lot of sweets? Yeah. Not lords and lords, but yeah, she does. Sweet chocolate biscuits every day? Yeah. Yeah. Kirsty is well aware of the sensitivities in having to break the bad news. If I was a parent, I don't think I'd like to admit that the reason that my child was going under general anaesthetics to have teeth taken out is because of the foods that, and the, the drinks that I'd been giving them. And that daily diet of chocolate biscuits now requires drastic measures. Nine teeth. Nine. She's got 20 in her mouth, actually. <laughs> All right, then, thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Waiting to see Kirsty next is six year old Cara and her mum, Mary. Do you know what they're going to do today? No. What did I tell yeah. you they were going to do? They're not going to x ray you. They're just going to look in your mouth. Well, they might x ray you, but they're going to look in your mouth, aren't they? And are they going to see how many rotten teeth you've got? Have I been here before? No. I'm nice and big for me. Really big, like a lion. We've got a big tooth coming, and then we have one. Curious, A. Eh? Sorry, sweetheart, you've got a bit of a poorly up there, haven't you? Has she ever sucked her thumb? No. Oh. But she had a dummy. When did she lose the dummy? Not that long ago. The dummy's affected her front teeth. Right. The proposed plan is to wobble out her back baby molars. OK. So there's eight there, and then there's three more, so it's 11 in total. Okay. Okay. She's going to wake up with with lots of teeth missing, which yeah. can be quite daunting for her. Okay. So you realise when you wake up, you'll be a bit gummy. <laughs> You're not, not going to have many teeth there. Okay. I know that. <laughs> She's a smart cookie. Okay. I didn't particularly want it to be a general anaesthetic because obviously there's, yeah. there's obviously concerns about putting a child under general anaesthetic. But if that's the way it has to be, because it's a lot of teeth she would struggle um, to have them taken out without anaesthetic and it would probably frighten her and put her off the dentist for life. Cara faces a nervous few days before her big operation. Next to see Kirsty is Robert and he's in agony. And it's much more serious than just toothache. He's had to drag himself here because, like so many of us, 
He's terrified of needles. You think, do I get up and walk out? No, you can't do that. Don't be stupid. When they call your name out, <gasps> oh, and that's when the tingly sensation starts to come through. Rub it sharply. It's the needle. Yes. It's just the needle. Knowing that someone's going to inject me is like, whoa, don't like this at all. And that's, that's my phobia. Robert had no choice but to come today. I had a stub of a tooth, and so my dentist said it had to come out. And unfortunately, it snapped, and the root went up, upwards, and went upside in there, right in the corner of my nose. And he realised that I had to have surgery. Am I right in assuming that your dentist has had a, a go at trying to take this out and, it, and it's broken? Yes. Luckily for Robert, Kirsty knows exactly what she's dealing oh, is with. Is that me, is it called? Opisectomy, yep. <laughs> I love my mouth, but my toes are like that. And I'm like, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I look forward and I will not look at the side of me. As soon as the, the dentist says, right, you're going to feel a little scratch. That is the close your eyes time. Big deep breath through your nose for me. There's no way I could see them coming towards me with a hypodermic. Nice slow deep breath in, Robert. Well done. Here we go, have a little bit of a rest for us. You okay? Wow. I'll start to get numb in a few minutes, okay. Terrified really well. the needles. You did really well. All I need you to do for the next one is just take a really big deep breath for me. Yeah. You want to let it go numb a bit first. In a different area, so that's that. Oh, I don't say help. that. <laughs> You're gonna be fine, Robert. You're just gonna feel me pushing onto the roof of your mouth, okay, with the back of my mirror. Right, let's go for ready? it. Okay. Yeah. All I need you to do is take a nice, big, deep breath through your nose for me and close your eyes. Well done. Not nice. Not nice. Not You're nice. Okay. Put your hand up for me if you want me to stop, Robert. Okay. Go on, let's do it. <laughs> Kirsty knows only too well what that's Robert is going thing. through. And she has a confession to make. I think people have genuine fears of the dentist. I myself am absolutely terrified. Every time I go to the dentist, I sit in the waiting room, my fists clenched, sweating. Is that sharp, Robert? Ever so slightly. But if, you, if, you're, if you're nearly there, just no, get it No, no, we don't want you to have any pain. Are you okay? Really well, Robert. Oh. It's out. You'll be glad to know we're done. All right. Once it's done, then it's, what was I bothered about? As I'm walking out, I'm going, why were you being so so stupid? It's uncontrollable. I look at it, it looks like quite a lethal weapon. It looks like really, it's, it almost looks like the, the, the nail of a small animal, like a little dog. Um, but that to be pushed up and right up, right up there in my nose, it could have been a serious, serious episode. Dental Hospital X-ray Department, Colin speaking. <laughs> Do you find the dentist scary? No. Not even when, like, they get the drill out? No. <laughs> oh, I do. Because it doesn't hurt. Oh, no, it doesn't. When, when they get the drill out and they get that water in, in your mouth... It doesn't. And your mouth goes all dry. <laughs> <laughs> it's afternoon and the waiting rooms are filling up with patients. Many of them are terrified. They call it dentophobia, the fear that we all have when faced with the men and women who only want to give us smiles. I thought I gave him three. Here at the hospital, fighting that terror is a priority. Oral surgeon Eric has spent years honing the art of pacifying thousands of nervous patients. Back when I was training, the emphasis was far more on the practical nature of what we do. Um, but as you go on through your professional career, you pick up the best psychological uh, tricks, if you like. Um, I, uh, I envy Darren Brown. <laughs> For 55-year-old Belinda, the years of neglect and painful rotting teeth have been a nightmare. But now she faces an even greater one. I need you to know what's going to happen. Well, I remember so you don't last worry. time is him to tell me to open my mouth. Yeah, yeah. I can't really remember. I don't want to remember, to be honest. No, no, a lot of people don't. Especially when they see my face, well, you don't really want to remember <laughs> my face. I'm no. first look at your face, love, sorry, honestly. If Belinda can face up to Eric for the next hour, it will all be worthwhile. 
The reward? A brand new smile. I'm going to just pop a little uh, plastic tube in there now. Once Belinda's sedated, Eric will have a captive audience. This is the happy juice. It's going to make you feel nice and relaxed. And there's your cheap Friday night out, OK? Which, ironically enough, is my nickname. So. Although, don't tell everyone. Oh, right. If a patient says to me, I don't like injections, I always say, well, neither do I. I really avoid them if I can. Pop a little bit of anaesthetic just up here. Sorry, man. This is probably the worst one, Belinda. I'm very biblical when it comes to injections. It's better to give than to receive. So I'm going to start with the lower at six. Pushing lots of pressure here now. It's hanging on by the skin of its teeth. <laughs> there we are. That's great. Rather sharp. Sorry about this. This is probably the worst one, Belinda. So once this is out of the way, it's all plain sailing. And to be pushing hard again, Belinda. Mm. There we go, a lot of pushing. There we go, super. A little bit of a flick round as it comes. So I think so. A little bit of a root retain. How are you doing there, Belinda? It's all gone according to plan. Belinda's dentures may not quite give her a perfect pearly white Hollywood smile, but for Eric, that's not an issue. Some people do come with unrealistic expectations, uh, and they they think that, you know, they think that they can walk in one day, uh, effectively a, 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 with a mutilated dentition, and walk out the next day looking like Tom Cruise or something. Okay, let's try that in now, and there we go. That's beginning to get in the right place. But I don't know about anybody else, but I'm quite pleased with the fact that my teeth are different shapes and sizes and colours, and that's because that's natural. And let's see if we can restore your smile. There we go. Lovely. Back together for me. Excellent. You're going to walk out with teeth rather than gaps. And we'll take you through to the recovery area. There we go. Super. Dealing with patients' expectations is a really important skill, and uh, sometimes you have to lower them. And sometimes you can raise them, which is always nice. Right. Your palms sweat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, short chair. Good is. <laughs> In North Manchester, four-year-old Caleb's mum put off taking him to the dentist. As a result, she too was in for a nasty shock. I didn't know they were rotten until we went to the dentist. I thought they were just fine. We tell him to brush his teeth morning and at night, but we won't brush them. He's always eating toffees. But if you tell him you can't have any more sweets, he wrecks your house. Do you know they have to put you to sleep? to take your teeth out. So you don't feel any of the pain? What they do, they put a needle in, then you'll fall asleep. Then when you wake up, you'll have a yoghurt and juice waiting for you. Then you'll have no teeth. You'll have no teeth. At the hospital, they bang home the message that sugary diets and poor brushing are to blame. The problem, too many of us don't want to know. I think when they're very, very young, the majority of it is about educating the parents because the children generally don't listen. Caleb's mum is unrepentant. I don't regret it because you can't stop kids eating toffees. Keeps your kids happy. Fair enough. If the teeth falls out, fair enough. There you go. What time is it? The time has come not only for Caleb, but for the other children facing an operation. <laughs> Dental problems are now the fourth most common reason young people under 17 are admitted to hospital. And that means the children's department is one of the busiest in the frontline battle to save the nation's teeth. One, two, three, four, five, six. And look at right. Hello there, come on in. The Holdsworth family is worried about three-week-old baby Jonah. Ideally, milk teeth should only appear when babies are at least five months old. But Jonah was born with one. 
The fear is it might wobble out and cause him to choke. Consultant Vidya takes a look. I've just put my finger there so he can maybe bite on it or scrunch on it. What I'm trying to establish now is to see how wobbly it is. See how it's firm and he's biting on it. It's not really loose to the risk of it going the wrong way. And what I would suggest is we leave things well be. She said it's not that wobbler, degrade it one, two or three, three beam most wobbler. And she said she wouldn't even consider it a grade one. So at the moment, That's she just said, peace of mind. yeah. Here, the most common form of sedation is so-called happy air. First used in dentistry in the 1840s, happy air calms the nerves, as well as keeping the child conscious but pain-free during the operation. So she's here, so we'll just get a set up bar and then I'll set to bring her in. Senior dental nurse Sarah prides herself as the children's tooth fairy godmother. We'll just pop the chair back for you, all right, sweetheart? And same, then... same rules, Daisy. All you have to do is relax. You're the boss lady. You can always stop me whenever you want. So you remember the little nose that goes over? So can you hold that there for me, sweetheart? Happy Air is uh, nitrous oxide and oxygen. It's conscious sedation, so they're, they're still awake and thin, but it's, they're, they're not aware of what's going on. They're in happy land. Nice and relaxed. Just think about nice things. Think about if you were on the beach on holiday and the wind. Just Nice and gentle breeze for you. Not that you're here at the dentist. Basically, you need to come to their level. Hence why I'm probably so good at it, because I'm good at coming down to people's levels. I can see a little smile coming there. So that's why it's called Happy Air, you know. So now we've made all your belly and all your fingers and everything else go sleepy. We need to make the tooth sleepy, don't we? The secret to giving a needle is you never show them the needle. It just goes underneath. Under and round, you don't see it, you don't know. Wide as you can, sweetheart. Wow. Really wide, really oh, wide. Good great. girl. Thank you. Thank that was great. I don't feel I don't really feel any pain. I just feel like... they numb it, don't they? they numb, yeah. They numb before they do a filling. Yeah, and it doesn't... What, like, what does it feel like after? It feels... I don't, I don't know. It just feels like dizzy. I feel it feels dizzy. numb, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels it's like, numb. Mm, ah. well, it's not nice at all, is no, it? No, it's not. It's 2 p.m. and six-year-old Kara is back for her big operation. She's about to lose 11 teeth. Right, and you come in close and you give your mummy a big cuddle. Oh, oh, huge oh, cuddle. Oh, wow. Well done. Yeah, yeah. now. Oh. And we're going to give this hand another wipe and a clean, all oh, right? I don't know about that. What are we going to do? It's a moment that every parent finds hard to bear. It's a bit too much, girl. And if I need to take a I think parents don't like to think that something they might have done might have led to the reason their child's being put to sleep to have teeth taken out. When they're on a, an operating table, they all look tiny, whether they're two years old or ten years old. And it's, it is, it is quite shocking. Last two teeth are coming out now. It's the first of Kirsty's eight extractions in one afternoon. And this happens two to three times a week. Each operation costs the NHS over 700 pounds. You can't get away from the fact that you are taking out multiple teeth and you can't help but think that the child has to go through sometimes many years with missing teeth, especially soon as it could be prevented. Hello, it's all finished. Okay, all finished now. Another one down, but six still to go. And it's not just our kids who have shockingly poor teeth. For Danielle, a lifetime of neglect, sweets and sugary foods have all taken their toll. I forget clean my teeth, um, and then when I do clean them, they bleed. Cleaning wasn't two or three times a day. It was once a day, three or four times a week. 
Fiancé David has managed to twist Danielle's arm because they have a big day ahead and they both want her to look her best. When we do get married, um, I want dentures in. I want to be able to smile um, and have teeth while I smile. There you go. It's that needle time again. There's a bit of a sharp scratch coming up. I want you to bear with me. More than a quarter of us put off visiting the dentist until the problem has got unbearable. Danielle's delay means she is in for a shock. Danielle needed multiple extractions, which unfortunately we're still doing that to patients. Without a dental checkup routinely, her teeth have deteriorated very quickly. You've got to think that she would have started getting these teeth from the age of six. Uh, and she's in her sort of mid-twenties, so she's not had them that long for him to get into that state. Danielle, try and relax a little bit. You're tensing up, love. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Danielle, turn to your right a little bit, sweetie. Good girl. I just feel sad that she's lost her front teeth, and as a person, I feel very upset about it. We shouldn't be doing it this day and age, but... The reality is there is patients like that. It'll be dentures for Danielle on her big day. She'll have her smile, but with the loss of nine teeth, she's full of remorse. If I could turn back time, then I'd take more care of them. Back with the kids having multiple extractions under general anaesthetic, it's as busy as ever. Next up is toffee addict Caleb. I feel a bit tingly. It's upsetting. One minute he's looking at you, and next minute he's just. Hmm. That's that's upsetting. To her mum's great relief, Cara is gradually coming round. It's all over now. Yeah, it's better you'll be getting now. It's all done. Yeah, you were a big, brave girl. On the operating table, Calum is paying the price for all those sweeties. And lower left D. They are very easy to take out. More often than not, they've started to, to wear away anyway at the root. Um, so that it does make taking children's teeth out a lot easier than taking adults' teeth out. I don't like this one being I do it every time that my kids. It will be three or four years before Caleb's permanent teeth start to grow, so he's facing a toothless childhood until then. It can be frustrating, but at the end of the day, it, we're humans, aren't we? We don't listen to everything we're told. <laughs> Quite awkward because your mouth's so wide at the back. You can see that big space and no biting yet. That's my cat, but hey, yours is smaller than mine. Though. It's not. Let's have a look at yours. Yours is. I yeah, could fit a pencil about, in mine. It's about the same. I thought it's honking in mine. No. See? No. That's a party trick. You won't be able to do that when it's done. It's grim. <laughs> The work done by the hospital's dentists is wide-ranging and even surprising. James is in remission from cancer. 
And soon he'll be having the latest in a series of remarkable operations to rebuild not only his teeth, but a large part of his face. It's been quite a long journey, yeah, so... Uh, it's just, you just feel like you're getting nearer every time, you know. A bit of progress. So just how far can the dental hospital go in transforming people's lives? It's 8.30 and the start of another day at the Manchester University Dental Hospital. For the emergency patients looking for free treatment with their chipped teeth, painful abscesses or raging toothache, it's first come, first served. But this is more than a place where they just fix teeth. It's a major teaching hospital, training the next generation of dentists, and also doing some cutting-edge dental surgery. All okay. you to do is keep your hands in for me at all times, OK? Yeah. This morning, James, who is married with two children, is going under the knife. A year ago, he received some devastating news. When somebody gets told that they have to have the nose removed because of cancer and it's pretty aggressive and it's a life-saving operation. Would you say no? You're not having it done? In the theatre, consultant Craig is getting ready to operate. Craig graduated as a dentist when he was just 21 and now specialises in restoring patients' faces that have been disfigured by cancer. I've got the best job in the world um, because I take patients who often are sometimes at the end of a, of a road as far as they can see it. And I have the great chance of doing things that make a vast difference. I've not got any front teeth there. Uh, about five or six have been taken out. That's the one thing um, I've got about, if annoy is the right word, because I've looked after my teeth. This is just the latest in a series of operations on James to reconstruct his face and his teeth. Having a removable nose isn't an attractive option because patients don't want their nose falling off in public. Today's operation will pave the way to giving James a new face. So, you know, for the, actually making the nose, he'll have a lovely um, sort of thin bit of skin for the silicon to... Titanium implants in his face will be the anchor points for a new permanent prosthetic nose. This is where dentistry in the 21st century meets plastic surgery. His mouth's slightly more complicated. He needs some more soft tissue because his lips quite tightly bound down because of all the surgeries had in the past. So we need to get some soft tissue from the roof of his mouth or from his cheeks and moving that in to relieve his top lip. Realistically, two to three months maximum, he'll have his front teeth as well. James is one operation closer to having working teeth again. Although a lot of people said you can't tell your teeth are not there at the moment, you know, but it would be strange when they put them in the, the, the front teeth and they can smile properly. Often it's simple things that really worry them, their teeth, their ability to speak, their ability to swallow, their ability to go out in public and have a meal, their ability to kiss the loved one. Desperately, these are the things they want. It's, it, it's not just about getting their cancer cured, it's about getting that back. I feel OK. A bit groggy when I came around, but it's very not bad. Good kill for a cup of tea. I think now you can actually see what the outcome's likely to be, and I think that then makes a massive difference to these patients because they can start, they've almost turned a corner and they can see the, the finish line. Wider, wider. I took all these out of the south. Yeah, mm. but these ones that are missing, I took them out myself because I had no choice. Just wobble them and wobble them till they yeah. come out. But I can't get them, can't get hold of the back one properly. So no, the back ones are a bit. It's like it's I have... a bugger. Manchester is home to some of dentistry's most skillful craftsmen. Morning, John. Professor Nick Gray is the master of false teeth and is picking up dentures from the in-house dental lab for his next patient. Yes, fine. Looks really good. Excellent. OK, thanks, John. Bye. For 10 years, June has not had a bottom set. It's been a decade of social misery. We've um, turned down uh, in invitations to meals and, and, and all sorts of things because I've been so embarrassed, because I've been worried in case they give me something that I can't eat. Where our 
best friends, I can say to them, uh, can we have a lasagna or something, you know, do a mint stew or something like that. But when, when other people, you can't uh, suggest to them what, what to do for your meals, can you? No, it has been difficult. So. Yeah, it has, yeah, yeah. June's had metal implants put into her lower jawbone, and today Nick's fitting dentures onto them. It takes days of precise measurements and intricate workmanship to get an exact fit, and there's still the chance it might not work. So it's a big day. Is it going to fit? Oh, I've, not, I've not slept all night. Have you? Are you that excited? Oh, I've been awake since about half past five this morning. All right, all right. Just relax. You can relax. It's going to be a bit of a surprise because it shouldn't move. Good. Good. And, but it might. <laughs> <laughs> and just turn towards me if you can. It's an ugly sight, but you'll get over it. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well done. Can you feel it digging in anywhere yet? No, not yet? No. no. Have a really good bite on it. Get angry with it. Can you get it to come out? It'll probably make you jump when it comes out, because it has all of a sudden... <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that's mm -hmm. one. It might click on the other one now. Oh! Smashing. Is, is, that, is that not normal? That's good. This is the culmination of two years of dental treatment for June. So let's see if you can pop it in. Do you want me to see if I can help you? You might have done it, actually. Yeah. Let's have a little look. No, I haven't. Yeah. No. Do you mind if I just press it now? Oh. You all right? Do a glass of water? A minute. You're not sore, are you anymore? Anyway? You okay with it? I'm, I'm terrible with ladies that cry, you know. Yeah. Oh. Are you, I'm sorry. Are you no, okay, right. Jim? Are you, you okay? alright? Yeah. 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 Are you crying because you're happy or sad? <laughs> I think it's because I've been so worried to talk about. Oh, bless you. Oh. I'm a softy. Oh, so am I. <laughs> But if you've got your own teeth and you don't think about it, you just pop things in your mouth and that's it. But um, it's been a long time because it's been about 10 years, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. that I've not been able to eat anything proper. And throughout those 10 years, June has dreamt of one thing above all else. I said, as soon as I get my denture, I'm going to have a bacon sandwich. Right. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, it's nice. Delicious. Delicious. OK, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Why do they need such big needles for it in your mouth? Well, they can take it out. Mean? Well, they, you know, they can, get, they can knock it out with a little one. Why can't they... Why, what's, the, what's the point of having that big silver thing? Ah. Uh. It needs to bring back gas in there <laughs> for me. The hospital has world-class specialist departments equipped to deal with some of the toughest problems in dentistry. It's got small teeth, hasn't it? So yeah. whatever we do, that it's got to be equal to small teeth. Consultant Martin is an expert in a rare genetic disorder called hyperdontia. This is a very typical patient for us. In fact, we've dug out his models from when we started. James didn't grow all his adult teeth. In fact, he's missing. I think it's 12 teeth he's missing. And when he presented to us, he still had eight of his baby teeth lying around. And in his late 20s, he just had difficulty smiling spontaneously because he taught himself not to. And we can go from this picture to that one, and it's a really forced smile. And I can imagine he wanted to do this while the camera was there. As he grew up, James became more and more self-conscious about his teeth. Well, I didn't realise until recently that you didn't smile. Without showing your teeth. Yeah, they looked sort of very vampirish, didn't they, the way they were positioned. It even spoilt what should have been the happiest day of his life. Nobody really asked me about it, or I don't think they noticed it that much. But I think that was mainly due to the fact that I just never opened my lips wide enough for people to see my teeth, to be honest with you. You can't see your teeth on any of them? Nope. Did you made job, sure that you did, yeah. yeah. Oh, you'll be smiling, so yeah. you'll have to have all your wedding photographs done all over again yeah. with a big smile on them. We've used four dental implants in the lower jaw, and these will be the foundations that we can build um, a bridge of teeth across there. So his lower front teeth will be replaced by porcelain teeth that are 
attach two titanium implants. And we're almost there. We're coming towards the end of his treatment with us. So I've got a lovely view here. I can see through the hole in the gum, I can actually see the titanium implants. It's taken six and a half years of treatment, and today Martin is checking the implants that will hold James's new teeth. I just need to do a, a final check of the colours we're going to use here, mm -hmm. okay. because the final bridge is made of the porcelain teeth, that's handmade. Yeah. So. James's job as a driving instructor means he needs to put people at ease. At times, his hyperdontia has made this difficult. You're very sort of conscious of how you talk to people and it can affect your confidence a little bit. I'm matching that. That's a pretty close match to your natural mm -hmm. teeth. Just bring your head down a little bit. That's your fair that into place there. I think, I think people probably would think, oh, God, he looks a bit more miserable than, than maybe your average person because I, I didn't want to smile as much and open my mouth and talk with my teeth. James's big yes, hope uh, is that Martin great. will give him the smile he's been denied since he was a child. When we take the studs out, we'll be fitting the final teeth for you. Brilliant. Big day. Fantastic. Um, While many of us are afraid of the dentist, for patients with a learning disability, that fear can become abject terror. Today, 51-year-old Julie has been brought in by her mum and dad. OK, Julie, I'm just going to take you down to the room that you're going to be staying in, OK? Julie is being treated by dentists Eric and Joe and a dedicated team of operating theatre staff. Filling in this tooth here. She's got some caries in approximately there. Yeah, Julie some needs some fillings and a broken tooth taken out. But because of her fear, they can only do this under general anaesthetic. You all ready? Yeah. Let's come around and have a look at you. Joel was very in control. Can I have a quick peek in your mouth? Yes. Yeah. Just, just so I can remind myself what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. I know you, but I don't know. Can't remember your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you take a book. <laughs> She certainly had Julie's confidence. It did help us a lot to have someone being very, very human with us all and, and showing a lot of care. Well, Julie, say, would you like to book. sit in here? And then no. Julie is terrified of getting on the bed, and Joe has to keep her calm while she's anaesthetised in her wheelchair. Can you tell me what you cook? What's your favourite thing <coughs> to cook? Scones! I'll tell you what, if you let us do this, I'll let you make me some cheese scones. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes hard as a clinician to not get drawn in and become emotional yourself. But then you kind of have to pull yourself back and think, hold oh, on, I've got a job to do here. I can't be blubbering all over the clinic. Ow, no, 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 that hurt. That's OK. Listen. Yeah, that's what I'm Julie, so you tell me, Julie, Julie, so do you know what I put on? For any parent, the sight of a loved one being put to sleep is deeply traumatic. You just wish it wasn't happening. You try to tell yourself it's got to happen, which it had to happen. And the problem with, with treating somebody like Julie is you saw how difficult it was to even anaesthetise her. I mean, I'm trying to do this normally with local anaesthetic and getting her to cooperate would be well, impossible, really. All this for half a tooth. <laughs> she just needed some basic fillings doing, but because I've not really been able to look in her mouth properly, one of them was unrestorable. The five looks like you need to take that one out right. for me. Okay. I've done all my bits, I'll, I'll do you. the hovering now. Great, yeah. I found it difficult as the waiting went on. I was getting uh, a little worried to why so long? Is everything okay? It's quite brittle, actually. It turned out, fortunately, they turned out to be two routine extractions. Thank you. Everybody deserves treatment, and so if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. You can't leave somebody with a potential risk of infection and not being able to function just because they can't accept treatment normally. Everything was okay. When she's in recovery and the tube's out and things, they'll, they'll give you a, a 
call and you can go and be with her. All right? Be okay. Oh. You don't need to worry. She's all right. Okay. Thanks. All right. You're welcome. Toothache is extremely painful. Special needs patients find it incredibly hard very often to communicate that pain. A nice little clothes peg for you. Clothes peg for your fingers. How's that? Take your time. So if we can find out what the cause is and deal with it, it, it often will result in, in a sort of a transformation uh, of the patient into um, an almost different person because they're so much more relaxed and happy in themselves. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. You're welcome. See you. Since she's been home, Julie seems to be on a a much better curve. More of the Julie we we kind of remember. No problems. No problems. Where's the tooth? In the bucket. It's in a bucket. We left it behind, didn't we? Yeah. Ticket number three, please. What are we actually waiting for? Um, we're waiting till the other patients have been seen. Yeah. And we're number five, and three have gone in. Yeah. So it shouldn't be very long now. Card for the car park. Oh, right, yeah. I keep putting things in different areas. So, yes, I had lost it. It was in a different place than what I thought I put it from the last time. Ah. James, the man who has never smiled, is here to see Consultant Martin. It's his 63rd and hopefully last appointment. I've had a few teeth out, I had braces on to shift a few around, I've had bridge work, and then that moved on to a bone graft, ready for some implants to be screwed in, and now I'm ready to have my teeth put on. You won't have a diamond smile, you'll have a million dollar smile. My thumb is your tongue at the moment there. Yes. Yeah. And we can see the blue bits on there. It's yeah. the metallic area where your implants are in your jawbone. Yeah. We've got the titanium studs, and they're hollow. We screw those into the right, implants okay. in your mouth. So the implants are like raw plugs, basically. It's very similar. Yeah. Very similar. And then this bridge, it bridges the gap, and it fits on top like that. Lovely. Okay, and then we glue that in into place there. Right. All, all so that effort for those little things. I know. It's hard to believe, isn't it? I think it's because it's so small. Yeah. The amount of detail to get into there. It's fine. It feels bigger in your own mouth when you see it, it outside. They look yeah. tiny. You remember when a baby tooth yeah. comes out? Like, Is that all? Yeah. I think with James, I've seen an improvement in him, in his self confidence as he's approaching the end of the line. He knows what he's getting, and I've seen him beginning to. His mouth's become more animated, his face is more animated. He's getting a smile, he's getting ability to chew with his front teeth. I can't imagine what that's going to be like. I, I presume there's an apple booked <laughs> somewhere along the way. He's going to bite an apple and he's going to enjoy it or something like that. So I want to make sure that the screws are tight enough. OK. If I do it too tight, there's a risk I'll take the head off the screw. Not a good day as a dentist. Yeah. Not a good day. I feel the tension there. Yeah. That passes, uh, uh. passes in a few minutes. It's OK. It's going to be very odd having front teeth again. We'll move to the stage where we glue them in. So if we call it a point of no return, it's yeah. because this is where we fit it all in. There's a chance I'd probably be speaking a lot better because some words don't come out right because your tongue kind of flows through the gaps in the teeth a little bit okay. weird. So there'd be a lot of good, a lot of good things coming, hopefully. So the jigsaw's beginning to come together. Yeah. This is on. This is permanently on. There's nothing clipping it. It's, it goes onto some screws. Fairly solid, isn't it? <laughs> He's had to come to us a lot, but the benefit at the end of it is a, is a, a human, emotional benefit, and, and that's priceless. That's priceless. So that's where it is, arm's length. Okay. And then look in your eyes in the mirror. Yeah. And then, and then you can lick your lips. And then yeah. teeth together and a toothy grin. You can smile. I can, yeah. You can smile. Come back now. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. And open. I can tell you're impressed with your work. I am. I am, I am as well. A beautiful, really beautiful. Thank you, Martin. I could never, ever repay him for what he's done, really. It's been a big part of my life, so saying goodbye. It's
you very much. And you get to know someone for that long, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, see you later. Very much. I'm really proud oh, of you. Oh, it's, it's I'm great. proud of him as well. He smiled. He smiled with us. In a sense, we have reached the end of his journey. Yeah, it's good. It's good. And he smiled. <laughs> Number five. Oh, was that number five? Five. We've to go, Ron. Who's number five? We're number five. And who's the patient? You or me? Yeah, well, you are the patient.